Hey everybody, it's Valen from Mischief of Mice here with a getting started on Thaumcraft. Now once I get through a few episodes of this and we're into the mod a bit, I'll probably break it up into a lot of little bit by bits. But for now, let's get into it. All right. First thing, we are going to go on a tour. If you want to skip the tour of anything that is new that Thaumcraft 4 brings, uh, feel free to just click the link in the top corner there. Uh, otherwise, I will continue on with this. We're going to get new biomes when you uh, start off. Magical Forest, Eerie, and Tainted Land. Now, Eerie is created by uh, Tainted Aura Nodes. This is an Aura Node. And there are uh, essentially evil ones in a way. But uh, eerie ones are created by those. Tainted lands uh, are not. They are sp they spread. And magical forest is what I'm in right now. So let me uh, give you a bird's eye view here. Magical forest often will have lots of uh, mossy cobblestone, large mushrooms, silverwood trees, and other friendly creatures, as well as uh, a few various uh, ones that might not be. But uh, usually it's a pretty good uh, zone to start off with in uh, Thaumcraft, at least in my experience. But I also set some waypoints so that we can view the others. So let's go to the Tainted Lands. All right, so you can see here we've got the regular ground. Then we've got some uh, like swampland over here, and this is tainted. It's turned purple. Now this is actually a very young tainted land. Uh, once it's been loaded in for a while, it can get very, very dangerous. Uh, more of this fibrous taint and this here, what is it, uh, crusted taint, I believe. Yeah, crusted taint will spread. Uh, and you can see it's turned the leaves different colors. It will actually just start turning everything into like this gelatinous, weird, creepy stuff. You'll get uh, plants and things that are were normal might become dangerous, like uh, tentacles or taint swarms may attack you. It will also infect creatures nearby. You might get a uh, sheep that will become tainted and then start attacking you you will actually notice a big difference in what they look like. Um, creepers and all sorts of other uh, creatures may become tainted. If you start near a tainted area, I recommend getting further away from it. It will take a while before you'll be able to combat the uh, taint spread. And if you are close to it, then you are just going to encourage it to continue uh, spreading because you're going to be loading the area that it's in. So, uh, moving on to another one, we have uh, an obsidian totem, and, oops, I just did that. An obsidian totem looks like this, varying sizes, and usually in the head will have some kind of uh, an evil node or tainted node of some sort, and um, it will actually darken the area for a radius around it. Now. Any of these uh, evil or tainted nodes will do this. Uh, so it's not just uh, the obelisk itself. You can mine this up, but it will actually break the node in the process. The rest of the obsidian tiles or totems should be mineable, uh, same as just mining obsidian. But at nighttime, you'll start getting some different bad guys spawning from this. So you'll get even more bad guys than usual. Now, on top of that, we also have an eldritch obelisk. Now this one is not populated, so therefore it's safe for me to get close to it. And you notice it has another one of these uh, sinister nodes here, and it will do the same, spawn bad guys, evil things. It might even spawn some other worse items, uh, like uh, eldritch guardians. But uh, you try mining this and you may end up regretting it. I do not recommend messing around with one of these things. Plus, you may need access to it later on if you are uh, very deep into Thaumcraft. So let's continue on with the tour and we'll go to a Wisp Shrine. Now this one here, as before, has another one of these sinister nodes and it has a chest. Underneath here, is a wisp spawner. So you'll want to be careful. Once again, if you're too close to one of these things, uh, this will spawn evil things. Let me actually time set 18,000. There we go. It will spawn wisps. And it will also spawn angry zombies and other creatures of that nature that are uh, non-standard uh, vanilla mobs 
the which usually are much tougher. But of course, in the chest, you'll get all sorts of crazy loot. You know, most of it thumb crap, some of it vanilla, but uh, on occasion, it could give you a big boost in how things go. Now let me uh, time set zero. You'll notice that this here is a furious zombie. As he takes damage, he gets bigger and bigger and <laughs> continues to uh, actually deal increased damage. Uh, his hitbox is still the same size as a regular zombie, though, so you'll want to aim for the feet. But let's get out of here and continue on back to other items. Now, here I have spawned above an eldritch uh, obelisk, and it has crimson cult members around it. These guys are very dangerous. They have strong ranged attacks. They summon other guardians that are heavily armored to attack you. And uh, you may end up needing to uh, farm these guys in the future. Ah, uh, there we go. They've summoned one of these uh, evil crimson knights now. Um, they may not necessarily be evil, but at least they're uh, definitely against you. So don't get too close to those, especially early on. You're going to end up uh, regretting it. So let's head on back home. And we are going to continue on with anything else that I may have missed. Well, that takes care of all those except for the barrows. Now, the barrows, I did not actually find any in my uh, wandering around on the map. But it is, simply enough, uh, a small dome of dirt with uh, typically one small door entrance that has iron bars across it. Once you get inside, it's uh, hollow. And uh, it's very similar to like a very, very miniature hollow hill of, uh, uh, oh, what is it, Twilight Forest. Um, and inside you'll find one of those sinister nodes. And, uh, of course, creatures will be down in a pit below it. There's stairs that go down, and then there will be uh, multiple chests that might have really good loot in there. But it's also very dangerous because it's dark, so it will constantly be spawning mobs on top of you if you're going down in there. Once again, uh, you'll want to be very cautious. It could give you a jump start on things in Thumbcraft, might not. Uh, it might also kill you. And here we are at the point where we're going to get started on actually working in Thumbcraft 4. First thing you want to do is make an iron capped wooden wand, which is made with iron nuggets. You just need enough to make uh, two caps, which we're going to make here. So it's just like making a helmet, but instead you use nuggets. Oops, I only made one. Let me make a second one here. And there you go. Then you put it at opposite sides and a stick in the middle, and you make yourself an iron capped wooden wand. Very simple item right there. Let's see F5 here, and you can see holding it in my hand, pretty cool. I also equipped some of these uh, goggles so we could see the aura nodes, but I'm going to get rid of those for now. All right, next thing you need is a Thaumonomicon, because right now this wooden wand really won't do very much. And to get one, you need to make yourself a bookshelf, place it down in the world, and then tap it with your wooden wand, and pow, you got yourself a Thaumonomicon. A lot of people love saying this word. I am one of those people. But anyway, moving on. <laughs> we have uh, a lot of tabs on the side here. If you just click and drag, you can see all the different items. Uh, Thaumaturgy, Alchemy, Artifice, and Golomancy. And you can uh, start off focusing on just about any one of these. But I do recommend that if you're new to this, that you explain, uh, excuse me, uh, it, that you definitely explore this and click on each one of these. Now by clicking on one, let's say here, plants and trees, it shows you that there are greatwood trees that are in Thumbcraft, and so on. The different ores, which I'll be showing you, enchantments, uh, the Thaumonomicon itself, how to make one, which just in case you forget later on, uh, the recipe should be in NEI if you have that mod installed. Uh, now there's research, aspects of magic, and so on. You can read through this. There's a lot of information. And each one of these symbols represents different things for research. You actually have to build these things in order to unlock the next item. You notice here it's in it's missing research, miss, missing required research. So you can't actually get any of these things until it says here, you need scribing tools and paper to get this research note. So there are many ways of getting this stuff. Let's see if I can find, now there are square ones, 
hexagon ones which you can actually purchase with research points uh, so you can actually speed your research up a little bit rather than having to take the time to research every single one of these and some of them start off unlocked already so the next thing you need to do is make a research table and an arcane workbench so you're going to need six oak wood planks and nine oak wood slabs doesn't have to be oak i just chose that for uh, this demonstration and you need to make three tables now these are thong craft tables and you place them down next to each other whoops my bad you place one down and you just right click it with your wand and it will turn into an arcane work table just like that and it, it actually took the uh, wand out of my inventory there and this is where it goes now if this wand has any aspects in it it would actually power this table uh, for crafting uh, items so it functions just like a regular crafting table uh, like I had on the ground here but it also has some advanced options and this is where the uh, item comes out for instance I could uh, make another iron cap and it comes out just like that no problems but it also has different benefits which I will explain shortly but until then let's go inside the house here where I have set up a research table already but I'm going to grab one of these scribing tools which recipe for that is just simply a glass bottle feather and an ink sack but we're gonna go out here and place down a couple more tables here just so you can see and then we're going to put the scribing, ta scribing tools on top and it automatically converts it into a research table now if I click this I enter a whole new uh, screen here interface and you can put your scribing tools in the top which I already have some in there because I'm in creative but you'll also need some paper parchment paper to put in there and you can start doing your research now before I get too carried away with that we're just going to go over with uh, some of the other items you can find in Thumbcraft. As you mine throughout the, the uh, earth, you might find uh, these different infused stones. Once you mine them up, you'll get different shards that are of similar color. And these shards will end up giving you uh, benefits for all sorts of stuff later on. So you're going to want to harvest these as you mine things. Keep them stored for later. Same thing with the amber bearing stone and the cinnabar ore. Those are both uh, plain things. The bearing stone will give you amber. The cinnabar ore will be just like it is here, uh, as if you were to have uh, mined uh, iron ore. It will stay the same, but it doesn't smelt uh, like uh, iron does. It actually will smelt into what is it? Uh, it will smelt into quicksilver. There we go. I forgot about that. So uh, you may need these later. Same thing with the amber bearing stone. So for now, just save those. Things you might run into, uh, V shrooms. These, if you touch them, will give you nausea. So let's drop one down. So if I walk over it, you see I got a little bit of nausea. It'll go away shortly. I mean, you see it's just like about 10 seconds or so. And uh, it's just, otherwise it can be used for ingredients. So you'll just want to not touch those unless you really enjoy the nausea effect. Cinder pearls can be used to get blaze powder plus they will eventually spread in uh, usually desert biomes or very hot areas I have not um, I don't remember if they spawn in the uh, nether or not but we can approach that later on uh, also you may find great wood saplings great wood trees silver wood trees uh, the silver wood trees are those blue ones that we saw over here and they actually will often have these uh, let's see oh yep there's one right there will often have growing around them a shimmer leaf which will give you uh, oops if you don't creative mode destroy it but it will often give you a, a little bit of quicksilver as well um, plus often these trees will have in the trunk of some of them an aura node usually it's not that strong uh, naturally found aura nodes are uh, often much more powerful for instance this one here that I have see 1938 that one's not so bad uh, but 
that's just uh, some of the items you could find. And each of them can be turned into different crafting materials. I mean, I used some dark wood here on the uh, roof, uh, plus there the, um, what is it, the silver wood comes out a little bit more uh, arcane looking, but it does not merge to create a larger image, it's just it by itself. I should take a quick moment here just to give you guys an idea on how to do some research and how to create your first research uh, friendly item. That's the uh, thermometer. You need to get yourself an earth shard, piece of glass, actually it doesn't have to be earth shards, any two shards plus two gold ingots and a piece of glass. I've got uh, two in each of these just so that I could make uh, two of them. But you'll see that uh, you get yourself a thermometer just like that. And what this does is it allows you to see aura nodes. Now, I have been wearing some goggles that allow me to see it automatically, but for instance, I don't see the aura node. I mean, you can see a very faint aura node here, but if I hold up this, when I look at it, actually even off the screen, uh, it shows you the aura nodes when you've got your uh, thermometer. So that's pretty handy there. Now, to continue with that, if you go into your uh, Thalmanomicon, and you look up here, there's the thermometer, tells you how to make it and everything in there, any two sh uh, shards as it says, uh, but it says here you need scribing tools and paper to get this research note so you can make the goggles that I was wearing. So let me get some paper, and I already have some scribing tools, so let me click on that, and now it says click to get research note for this research. So I'm going to click and it says it's been added to my inventory. So, lo and behold, I have research notes now for goggles or revealing in my inventory. Now what to do with that and how to use the research table is you just click on it and you can do uh, multiple things with this. First and foremost, you can actually, these are the different uh, primary elements. So you've got your air, aqua, ignis, ordo, perdito, or some people say perdicio, uh, or terra. And you can actually combine these by clicking on one and another, and then combining it, and you may get another element. In this case, I got Lux, another uh, item that I need to research. So I just learned this. So if I look through things with my thermometer, it sometimes will allow me to scan them. For instance, I'm going to click right click, and it says to understand this, you need to study the sources of life. So I need to do further research before I can actually uh, unlock the uh, grass block magic components. So going back to this though, I have research notes. I can uh, The other item I can do with this is put it in here, and then I need to connect three different aspects. But I haven't learned these yet. So in order to learn them, I need to go running around in the world scanning anything and everything I can. See, so yeah, nothing's happening there. Uh, I think I might have some something in here. There we go. I got gained four research points for Aqua. You see it kind of shot up into the corner there of the screen. So if I go back here, I now have four more Aqua. That is one way to get more research points. And research points are spent on this map, which I will uh, go over in more detail on the next episode. Now, if you have some issues getting research points, like you are running low or you run out, I recommend that you invest in getting some of these crystal clusters, which are relatively simple to make. Uh, for instance, an earth crystal cluster uh, consists of six uh, earth shards. Let's see if I can uh, get some shards here. There we go, and you just put a few in there, and you get yourself an earth crystal cluster, just like that. And then when you place it down, it makes a sound that's very satisfying. Now, what this does is uh, when these are near a research table, as well as uh, bookshelves, you will gain uh, a possibility for ghost points. Now, if I were to run out of Terra, which you see it's got that spark on it, then 
it will slowly over time regenerate points lost and give me a little bit extra. Now you can use these, as I showed before, to make more complex compounds as well. So you will always have some way of obtaining more research points, even if you run out, though it is very slow. It is highly recommended that you have a bunch of these nearby and that you have a whole lot of bookshelves nearby as well because those will end up giving you a larger bonus. So uh, if you end up having your enchantment table set up nearby to your research table, it's probably going to be a really good idea. And that noise you heard earlier was uh, Timmy here getting rid of a uh, wisp that got too close to my house. Anyway, uh, if you desire, you can fight monsters and gain aspects. If you notice in the top left there, I have an aspects meter. And just by right-clicking here, I start sucking out some of the air in it. Now I can do that, but if I do it too much, it's actually going to suck it flat and it might have a chance of never coming back. So I'm not going to continue with that. But you can also fight mobs, uh, creatures nearby. Let's see if I can find, uh, I saw a zombie or something over here. Let's see, there's a creeper. Let's try just killing him. And you see there's these, it's not quite experience. There were other little uh, bubbles floating around. Those will actually refill your wand as well. So if you notice, I'm actually getting some Terra. That green one there, I now have four. Different mobs will give you different things. Let's see, skeleton. There we go. And you can see now I have some Ignis and some Ordo. So I've got uh, a little bit. So you can actually farm mobs to get the uh, aspects you need in your wand in order to uh, use it later on. But for now, I recommend just doing the research. Now I've been scanning stuff for a while, but just to give you guys an idea of how to usually get started when you're uh, scanning items so that you don't get too stumped too early on, as, uh, I know I've actually spent a lot of time in the past when I was first doing Thumbcraft to um, scanning just about as much as I could and finding that nothing would scan. This should help you get started. Now this can change in m many different uh, Thumbcraft versions and it has in the past, but usually I start with some kind of torch um, or you could combine the elements to create it like I did earlier. Um, coal, charcoal, or a coal block. Uh, then a grass block, a uh, trap door, then followed by either a bowl or a chest, or both. You know, uh, the more you scan, the more points you get. Uh, glass, and then uh, usually, uh, this is where I end up getting stuck, is the next part I tend to combine. Uh, now, what I usually do is, let's see if I can find it here, Victus plus Perditio equals mortis so that will get you past to the next level and uh, now that you actually see that i've done a bunch of research which i believe i've unlocked all the um the researchable uh, aspects here um, you can now see that everything is revealed on here and i can continue on with trying to connect these now how this works is uh, you see i've got this uh, magic wand symbol up here which is precantatio plus the owl which is census and this here, which is, I believe, Aurum. Uh, let's see if I'm right on that. Yep, Aurum. So what you do is each of these has a different uh, breakdown. Uh, you can use other more base elements to make them. And that's how you connect all these together. For instance, let's start with the owl here, which is census. Now I have my Thalmanomicon. And if I go to this, the Aspects of Magic, click on it and scroll over, it actually will show you all of the aspects that you've unlocked. Now if I scroll over to Census, you can see I scanned some spider eyes in order to unlock that one. But it, is, it consists of air and spiritus. Now spiritus also is made up of other items. It's made up of victus and mortis. And I just showed you mortis actually is consisting of something else. So you can actually trace this back further and further. But if you trace it back one step, like this goes to air, so that makes things simpler for me, at least in my mind, I'm going to have this connect to air. So, oops, I'm gonna, you just click and drag where you want it to go. I'm going to have it go here. Now the magic one here, 
which is Precontatio. I'm going to once again go into my Thaumonomicon, whoops, and go into Aspects of Magic. And we're going to find Precontatio. Now this is all alphabetical, so that should help you to find things a little quicker in here. Vacuos and Potentia. And I know Potentia consists of uh, Ordo and Ignis, which those are also both base elements. I'm actually going to go with Potentia, I think, unless I forget what Vacuos does here. Oh, Vacuos goes to air, so I am actually going to go with Vacuos. So let's see here. Uh, now, if you notice, when I use these, I grab it, it says 10, and I put it here, it now says 9. Now, if I want to eliminate this, and I put the wrong one here, let's say I put Vitreous, and, oh, that doesn't link up, that wasn't the one I wanted to grab. Well, you can still click it, and it'll go away, but then you still lose it. Now, once you unlock more uh, of the Thaumonomicon, in this case it is uh, Research Expertise, then, or the next one after that even, you might be able to uh, save those points. You might be able to get them back if you make a mistake like that. So, uh, but to continue, let's see, Vacuos, I know, breaks down into air. So there's that. And now let's go with Aurum. I can't remember uh, what Aurum is made up of, so let's go to that. All right. And once again, Aspects of Magic. And it should be at the beginning here. There it is. Ah, Magic and look at that, air. All right. You got it? You got things covered? I heard you shooting at something. Okay, well, anyway. It goes to air as well. And then what combines into air? Well, I know that Lux does, because that consists of Ignis and air. So if I put this here, they all connect, and it's completed. Discovery. Goggles of Revealing. Not usually the first item that uh, a lot of people end up discovering, but it, I did in this case. So you put it on your taskbar, you right-click, and you now have completed the research. When you open your Thaumonomicon, it now lists it under Artifice. When I click on that, it shows you how to make it. Now you'll need these items here. If you notice the uh, this faded icon in the background, it's a magic wand. In your arcane workbench, you take these items and you can make goggles of revealing. So let's actually do that real quick. I have my wand, which hmm, regrettably doesn't have enough ignis in it. So I'm going to try and make myself now this is just me cheating real quick so that I can, uh... nope, none there. I'm still getting points though. This is like the best way to uh, get uh, experience, by the way, is by scanning aura nodes that uh, may or may not have, uh... well, especially the uh, sinister ones. Now if you notice, these guys are actually interfering with each other. One of the most powerful is going to absorb the others. But uh, if I'm in a biome with fire in it. Ah, there we go. It's more prevalent to have fire. Now, if you notice, these ones all have, uh, more or less, have terra of some sort. But for now, I am going to absorb some of this one here. There we go. I've got enough ignis in my wand now. We're just going to let those guys do their thing. Put this in here, and I now have plenty of aspects on my wand. I've been draining a little bit from uh, other things as we go. Uh, now, to recall the recipe, two thermometers, two gold ingots, four leather pieces. And I have all but the gold, so let me get some gold here. And let's see if I can remember this. We've got two of these, two of these, and two of those. And if you notice here, it says that I need a bunch of these different aspects. Oh, and I actually don't have enough order. So let me find the order stuff real quick. And this will make things a little quicker for me. Let's see, that one have order? That one does. So I'm going to drain the order from that one. And there we go. Now I can put this back in. And you'll notice everything is solid now, nothing's blinking. The cost, because of the wand I'm using, is actually greater than what the usual requirements are. So this iron-capped wooden wand increases the cost, uh, which is kind of detrimental. But 
by making this, I then get a V discount later on by wearing it. So, by pulling this out, I now have goggles of revealing, which I currently am wearing. And what this allows you to do is automatically see things like aura nodes flying around in the world. So, easiest time to find them is late at night. Usually if you're uh, flying around, or well, in my case, running around. Oh, look, there's a patch. Those are one of the rare creatures that you could find in a magical biome. They are uh, definitely worth trading for in uh, the future. But if you notice here, there is a faint glow. And there you go, there is another aura node. Often I will find many aura nodes over uh, water, so getting a boat or several boats as they tend to break quite easily. And then finding them with your goggles of revealing is a lot easier than uh, using your um, or thom thermometer, which I'm going to get another one. Oops, thermometer. There we go, so I could scan this horn out. And there we go, I now got more research points and so on. But uh, you can also combine these goggles with uh, other armors later on. And uh, that's all we're going to do for this little section here. I'll meet you back at the base. So that about does it for this episode. Uh, I do recommend that you continue on with uh, your own route of th going through the Thaumonomicon and uh, you're following the research, uh, as well as using your arcane work table to make new items. Uh, you can scan items uh, as much as often. It's probably the best way to go. Uh, and, I mean, even the most unlikely of things, throwing things on the ground and scanning it. You may or may not find something of use including your own Thaumonomicon. So, uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this episode, and uh, if you have, please give me a like, feel free to comment, or subscribe, and until next time, see ya!